The instrument of murder is hardly a proper toy for an eight-year-old, as sure as my name is Boris Karloff. And this instrument casts an evil shadow even beyond the death it has caused. And upon it is the mark of the hand. That's the name of our story, based on a novel by the celebrated Charlotte Armstrong. Our principal players are Miss Mona Freeman, Miss Jessie Royce Landis, Mr. Shepard Strudwick, Miss Rachel Ames, and Mr. Judson Pratt. Let me assure you, my friends, this is a thriller. <laughs> Kilburn? How's the bullet enter? Straight up. Shattered some of the crystals. The other bullet, Doc? Through the back. Thanks. It's my pleasure. Come on, boys. Are you ready for me now, Lieutenant? I think so. Come on in. You must understand, of course, Mr. Kilburn, that our main concern is to shield the child. She's my daughter, Lieutenant. What do you think my concern might be? It's one of the Maori brothers from the house next door. The young one, the good-looking one. Have you ever been under psychiatric care? No. Is there anything different about her lately? Anything uh, peculiar about her behavior? Not that I've noticed. You wouldn't hide anything from me. Why should I? How could I? My mother's brought the family here every summer since I can remember. This is a small resort community, Lieutenant. People know us, everything about us. You'd be surprised what people manage to keep hidden, Mr. Kilburn, even in the best of families. I'll see you in about an hour, boys. Thanks, Fred. Oh, Mr. Kilburn. Betty, this is Lieutenant Gordon, Miss La Follette, Lieutenant. She divides her time between Tessa and my mother. Hello. How do you do? About Tessa, Mr. Kilburn. She's in shock. She's under sedation, Betty. Just stay with her, please. I'm frightened for her. I know. We all are. Please, go up and stay with her and... Betty! Betty, do you hear me? Betty! 
go up and see what she wants, but she's not to come downstairs. Do you understand? Betty! You come in, please. I'm here, Mrs. Kilburn. Well, get me out of here. Do you hear me? I said, get me out of here. Your son told me you're to remain in your room. Thank you. I'm always up at the crack of dawn. Habit, I guess. Do you usually entertain at 8 o'clock in the morning? I'm not sure I care for your phrasing, Lieutenant Gordon. Coffee was being served for three, Miss Walsh. Mr. Mallory and his brother are neighbors. They'd work their garden and... Well, it became a ritual. We'd have breakfast together here every Sunday. It was the same as every Sunday. The servants are off, so I prepare breakfast. Well, it was a little different this morning. This morning when I opened the door, Charlie was alone. I asked him what had kept Paul. He said something jokingly about Paul getting more topsoil on himself this morning than there was in the rose bed. And he was still washing up. We came into the living room and Tessa walked in. She seemed in the best of spirits. I kissed her good morning, gave her a piece of cinnamon bun, and, and Charlie and I walked over there just chatting. The next thing I knew, she, she had the gun cabinet open and was playing with that gun. She'd done it before and Douglas had been furious. She tried to turn away and it went off somehow. <laughs> the chandelier and he turned and it went off again and and Charles I screamed I screamed I screamed Sylvia Sylvia darling it's all right now settle down it's all right I'm sorry I just lost control it's all right if you don't mind lieutenant no darling I'm all right You say your daughter had played with the guns before? I'd, uh, found they'd been handled one night, and no one else had been in the room except Tessa. You accused her? Well, yes, I did. And she'd lied before about things that we both knew that she'd done. And I just couldn't understand how a normal little girl would... You think she's normal? What a horrible thing to say. Is she? Do you think she's normal? I can't answer that. I'm not a doctor. Let's get back to the gun. She denied touching it? That's right. But the thing that really upset me was... I'd found the key to the gun cabinet in her room, and she knew it. And in the face of all that, she... She still lied about it. She didn't lie about it. I told Douglas it, it was child's fantasy, storytelling. Mr. Murray. Uh, yes? The two shots and the rest of it. You heard all this, too? I... Uh, I, I saw it, Lieutenant. I, I was almost at the door. It was locked, you remember? Yes. Why was the door locked? Since Tessa trampled my prized flowers, I... I'd ordered it locked. Did she admit to this? No, but her footprints were clearly outlined in the flower bed. Obviously, this child is not to be trusted. That's not true. The child's had little guidance. Her grandmother is old and sick. What about Miss Fowler? Betty's just a college student. She's going back to school as soon as we leave for the city. There's been a long succession of nurses and governesses. Well, what can you expect of the child? That's why Sylvia's been our house guest this summer. We planned to be married in a month or so, and then she'd devote all the time that's needed to Tessa and her problems. Is she awake? It's difficult to say. I'd like to see her. <sighs> Call me. Hello. Don't frighten her, please. Don't worry. I 
see you like parakeets. I like them too. What's his name? <laughs> or should I say hers? I wish there was some way you'd talk to me, Tessa. I'd like to have you trust me. Wouldn't you like to tell me what happened? Are you a psychiatrist? No. No, I'm a policeman. Oh. You're not afraid of me, are you? No. That's good. Now, wouldn't you like to tell me what happened today? I won't tell you anything. I want you to deliver a message to my family. A message? Yes. What is it? I'm never going to speak again. Why, Tessa? Are you angry with them? Is that why you won't speak to them again? You don't understand. I'm never going to speak to anyone. Well, why, Tessa? Because it's nothing but trouble for kids. Speaking's for grown-ups. It doesn't matter what they say. But for kids, no. No matter what, I'm never going to speak again. Just a couple of minutes. What do you see? Hmm? All right, why don't you take a five minute rest? When you come back, maybe you'll see something. Come on, come on. Amnesia. If you saw his wife. <laughs> Have you seen the Kilburn girl? Uh, yeah, yeah, little Tessa, yes. Did she speak to you? No. She has not spoken for two days. But uh, that is not unusual. I have seen cases like this where they don't speak for a month, two. Maybe a month in a state hospital under observation. Oh, Doc, I can't wait a month. This is not a case where a child has lost a power of speech. She has just decided... Not to talk. Well, isn't there some way we can make her talk? Mm. You beat her, maybe, huh? This, this child has had a traumatic shock. Another shock would cause damage beyond repair. But I need her testimony. <laughs> testimony, testimony. Hmm. You want a wonder pill, yes? Methamina diazepoxide. Would that work? You take it. Make a lion lick it, keep his paw set in the paper. <laughs> okay, Doc, I'll keep in touch. Mm. Uh, uh, send in uh, Mr. Amnesia, yes? I want to make on all those people right now. Douglas Kilburn, Charles Mowry, Paul Mowry, Sylvia Walsh. What about the old lady? Be my guest. Try them all, but get the information as fast as you can. Any special hunches where? No, FBI, New York police, go the route. Try this in Washington, D.C., New York, Chicago, Detroit. If the rest of you would leave us, I'd like to speak to Mrs. Kilburn alone. I wondered how long it would be before you got around to suspecting me. Suspecting you, Mrs. Kilburn? Don't you think it was an accident? It was not. That child didn't shoot him. Tessa's never fired a gun in her life. The mark of her hand was on the pistol. She didn't do it. I'm old and spoiled and a nuisance because I'm ill, but I know the people in my little world, and I know that eight-year-old child, and I tell you, she did not do it. May I? Oh, help yourself. The whiskey's on the left. Water, thanks. Water? 
You know why the child won't speak? No. You think she's mentally sound? Yes. Disturbed, but mentally sound. And I won't have my granddaughter or any Kilburn committed. Nobody suggested committing her. Lieutenant. I love that child. What are you looking so stupid about? Mrs. Kilburn, everyone suggests such great love for Tessa. But no one in this house ever came right out and said it. Except you. You know that? Everyone just took it for granted that Tessa fired that shot. Is there anything wrong with her, Mrs. Kilburn? No, of course not. She's done a psychiatric care before. That's not true. <laughs> she asked me if I was a psychiatrist. Now, an eight-year-old doesn't know the meaning of the word, unless she's been in contact with one. I don't know anything about it. Then who does? I suggest you ask my son. I already have. He claims to have no knowledge of it. Then you have your answer already. Mrs. Kilburn, I suggest you consider telling me the whole truth. Because if you don't, I'll be forced to place Tess in a state institution for observation. You wouldn't. I have no choice, Mrs. Kilburn. Your granddaughter killed a man. Walsh and Mr. Mowry's all over the table. Tesses are the only ones that tell us anything. That we already know. Can't you trust me, Lieutenant? The last time I trusted a pretty girl your age, well, that's a story I only tell when I'm in my cups. Oh, please, Lieutenant. This is serious. Far more serious than you might imagine, Miss Fowler. When Charles Mowry was shot, his brother couldn't have possibly got there fast enough to see it happen. Mrs. Kilbert. Your son disclaims any knowledge of having sent Tessa to a psychiatrist. I don't think Douglas would lie about a thing like that. Would you? See here, young man. Tessa's been under the care of a Dr. Richards. You sent her to him. Mrs. Kilburn, we found Tessa's last governess. She told us that she took the child to the doctor's office periodically, on your instructions. Well? Yes, it's true. Why didn't you tell me? A little girl is found with a gun in her hand and a dead man on the floor. It's an accident. Would you expect me to give you reason to suspect her of anything more? I don't understand. When Douglas's wife died, I think he died too. He functioned like a machine. He really didn't care. He paid absolutely no attention to Tessa. When she grew up, she would deliberately smash things. And then she'd tell Douglas what she'd done. Because of her truthfulness, he didn't punish her. Well, you know what she was doing. Yes, the doctor told me it was a perfectly normal reaction. The child was trying to get her father's attention. She couldn't do it by telling the truth, so she proceeded to lie about it. For that, Douglas did punish her. And even punishment was better than being ignored. Yes. Yeah. But then she began to resent the punishment. I don't know. Perhaps she considered Sylvia a rival for her father's attention. Did she resent being punished for something she didn't do? Well, she denied trampling the flowers. 
She denied handling the pistols. Perhaps she was telling the truth and nobody believed her. Hmm. Yes? Oh, put them on. Yes, Mr. Murray. I'd like to talk to you, Lieutenant. Please, let me talk to you. When? Eight? Here? Good. Lieutenant, do you think there's a chance for Tessa? Yes. If she tells us what really happened. If not, you know what I have to do. Oh, I thought you were alone, Lieutenant. Excuse me, Mrs. Kilburn. Have you got something? One of your customers has a nice little record. Forgery, fraud. Thanks, Joe. Anytime. Give me the Kilburn house. Hello. Oh, Betty? Oh, this is Lieutenant Gordon. Is Mr. Kilburn there? Huh? Oh, he's downtown shopping, huh? Uh-huh. Okay, thanks. Talk to you about. This is a report that just came in. Douglas. I don't know how to begin. Begin what, dear? Did you know Charles Mowry before we met? Is that what the detective told you? I'm asking you, did you? You don't have to get angry. Did you know he served a term for forgery and another for fraud? No, I didn't. It was an accident, wasn't it, Sylvia? Why do you suppose a policeman starts to investigate an accident? I don't know, Douglas. Because of discrepancies. When 
you told Gordon what happened, you said the first shot hit the ceiling, but I remembered afterwards. It was the second shot that hit the chandelier. Well, I guess I was upset. I, I must have made a mistake. Did you know Maori before? Answer me. All right. Yes, I did. I, I wanted to tell you, but I was afraid to. Afraid of what? Of Charles. You don't know what he was capable of. We were engaged once, but I broke it off. So he followed me here. Don't you see? I, I had to pretend that we just met. Why? Because I love you, Douglas. I don't want to lose you. I don't know what I'd do if I lost you. I might as well be dead. Look out! <laughs> You almost got your wish. upstairs with Tessa? No. He... No, he took a tray up to her, but she refused to eat, so he brought it down again. Excuse me. I, I hope you forgive the drawn shades. It's because of that little girl. She's always looking into the room. She stands up there in her window and stares. Well, she's not there now. Well, what do you want to talk about, Mr. Murray? Yeah. No, across the garden. Get hold of it. Tessa, she tried to kill me! Get hold of Stay with her. I don't understand. She tried to kill me. I, I don't know, darling, but you must not I, upset I you, sister. No. What happened, Miss Walsh? Well, she, she tried to kill me. I, I was taking some dessert to her room. Well, when I walked in, she... She had that knife under her pillow and... Where did she get it? Douglas, you took her her tray, didn't you? Yes, but I took it back downstairs with me. I'm sure I did. Well, maybe she stole it from her lunch tray and, and, and waited until I walked... Miss Walsh. Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure that this child threatened you with this knife? Well, of course I'm sure. Don't you believe me? I'm sorry. Well, I, I can't say I blame you. I, after that ridiculous story I told when Charles was killed. Are you saying you lied about what happened to Charles Maury? Yes. Then Tessa didn't shoot him? Yes, Tessa did shoot him. What I'm trying to say is that it, it wasn't an accident. She did it deliberately. As long as my story was accepted, I didn't mind, but, well, obviously it wasn't. I almost lost Douglas because of it. And I almost lost my own life. The child's insane. What are you saying? I'm sorry, Douglas. I can't pretend it was an accident. 
Tessa knew what she was doing. She shot Charles Maori deliberately. She had the gun with her when she came into the room. It was fully loaded. Obviously, she'd hidden it just as she hid the knife. She said, Mr. Maori, I'm going to kill you. Charles thought she was playing a game. She fired. I leaped at her and grabbed her wrist. And the gun went off again, hitting the chandelier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't want to tell the truth for Tessa's sake. And you, Mr. Murray, you saw all this too? No, he, he heard the shot just like everybody else and came running. I told him to just back me up no matter what story I told for Tessa's sake, and he agreed. Oh, Douglas, we were just trying to shield that child. It was a mistake. Is this why you called me, Mr. Murray? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, just what Sylvia told you. I, I was going to. Uh, just what Sylvia told you. Stay here, all of you. Great. I really fixed it up great, didn't I? Yes, I heard. You know what this means, don't you? Up until now, I could have reported Maury's death an accident. Now it's gonna be murder. Oh, an eight-year-old child murder. Don't be ridiculous. I have to report Miss Walsh's story. Who's to deny it? If that child deliberately shot that gun, she'll be institutionalized. We have just one chance to prevent that. What's that? Ask your father to come up here. child staring at me from her window. I will not have you staring at me, too. What do you find so fascinating about my hands, anyway? Paul, for heaven's sakes, leave the girl alone. We're all under a strain. They've been up there for a long time. Don't you understand, Tessa, that even an accident is serious enough? But now we've been told that you deliberately shot Mr. Maury, and that's far more serious. Tessa, listen to me. She's exhausted, Gordon. Why don't you let the I'll child... let that child do whatever she wants, after she tells me what happened. Tessa, was it an accident? Did you shoot him at all? Was the gun placed in your hand? Did you see Mr. Murray lying on the floor when you walked into the room? Tessa, answer me! Stop badgering the child! You're afraid of what she might tell me, Mr. Kilburn? Do you know what I'll have to do if you don't talk to me, Tessa? Do you know, Tessa? Was the gun placed in your hand? Did you see Mr. Murray lying on the floor when you walked into the room? Just that answer me! That's enough, Gordon. Let her alone. You keep on it. She's my daughter, and I said let her alone. Now you listen to me, little girl. I uh, didn't think your daughter meant that much to you, Mr. Kilburn. Get out of here now. I'll go. But I'll be back with a court order for that child's custody. Did she speak, Lieutenant? Did Tessa speak? No. No, she didn't. What are you going to do? Well, I should have done days ago. You're not going to send that child to a state institution. I have no choice. Good night. something, 
Tessa. I never hit anyone over a lady in my life before. I'd... I'd like to try to explain something to you. You don't even have to listen if you don't want to. Things just haven't been right for me since your mother died. I didn't mean to make you suffer, too. Try to understand this. It might help. I know I haven't been... I haven't paid very much attention to you, but then... I haven't paid very much attention to anyone or anything. Tessa, the only reason I want you to speak to me now is because of my concern for you. After that, you don't... Never have to speak to me again if you don't want to. But I want you to know that I don't believe you shot that man. I don't believe you attacked Miss Walsh. And about the flower bed. Footprints aren't such a proof of anything. They could have been planted there. Yeah, that's funny. Footprints planted in the flower bed. Footprints can be planted just as well as fingerprints, my darling. Tessa. Tell me, Tessa, whatever it is, I'll believe you. Because I'm your father. Because I love you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Paul. Douglas, how is she? Asleep. She's exhausted. Did she talk? No. All I had to do was to make contact with her. A simple act of trust between father and daughter. I couldn't do it. And it's hopeless? No, I didn't mean that. Just now, for the first time, she showed some emotion. She cried. In the morning, I'm sure she'll talk to me. Where are you going? To stop Lieutenant Gordon getting that court order any way I can. Will you be long? As long as it takes. Betty, why were you staring so at Paul Mowry? What did you see on the table? I'm not sure, Mrs. Kilgrim. But you did see something. Yes. Why didn't you tell Lieutenant Gordon? Because I couldn't connect it until now. Connect what? Lieutenant Gordon told me among the worthless bits of evidence he was trying to piece together, there were some fingerprints. Whose fingerprints? Paul Mowry's. There were three sets of Paul Mowry's fingerprints on the table. What of it? He was outside the door when I entered the room. I saw him break in and go straight to the body of his brother. He never touched a thing in that room. Are you positive? Yes. Don't you see, Mrs. Kilburn? That means that Sylvia's second story is also untrue. It means that Paul Mowry was in the room earlier that morning. He had to be. He was there before he broke in. Now, Lieutenant Gordon couldn't have known that. He naturally assumed that Paul Maury touched the table after his brother was killed. You want to see me? Now? All right, I'll be right over. Follett, leave. Where did she go? I don't know. She just ran out of here. Sylvia, she knows something. I'm sure she knows something. The way she kept looking at me. Oh, get a hold of yourself, Paul. 
Who's in the house? Tessa, the old lady upstairs. What was Lieutenant Gordon doing at your house when that child attacked me with a knife? I... he dropped it to question me. No, you sent for him. Why, Paul? Sylvia, I can't take any more of this. I will not burn for you. But he's going to burn. I was willing to go along with you and my brother when it came to fleecing Kilburn. A fast marriage, a quick divorce, and a big settlement to divide among the three of us. That much my conscience could live with. But murder? No. Obviously, you haven't told this to Lieutenant Gordon. No. We just come into my study when we heard you scream. Your luck held, Sylvia. Your luck held too, Paul. What do you mean? You put the gun in the child's hand, I didn't. Yes, but you stood by to back me up. I didn't kill Charles. I had no idea that he intended to divulge the entire scheme to Douglas. I had to stop him from doing that, didn't I, Paul? He said he was doing it for love, Paul. For love of me. He didn't want me to marry Douglas. Not even for one day. Now, what do you think of that? Sylvia, you've got to let me out of this. No, Paul. And if you ever feel talkative again, just remember this. Yes, I pulled the trigger, but you're guilty too. By law, you're just as guilty as I am. Now, get out of here. Don't you ever set foot in this house again unless you're invited. But you called me on the phone. Oh. You did. You said... Oh. The old lady. It must have been the old lady. I remember. I had trouble hearing on the phone. I said, Syl Sylvia! You can't. Keep out of it, Paul. Sylvia, this is diabolical. Sylvia, this is cold-blooded murder. That old lady knows about us. Thanks to your stupidity, she's trapped us. Well, this will be the same as with Charles. They'll find the old lady dead and the gun in the child's hands. And they'll put her away once and for all. You're the one that should be put away, Sylvia. Get out of here. And if you say anything to anybody, I'll tell them you killed your brother. I'm here, Sylvia, waiting. happens to me is of no importance. Don't do this to Tessa. She's so troubled, so helpless. You should have thought of Tessa when you phoned Paul, Mrs. Kilburn. Now I have to do this. <laughs> Oh, here, let me 
baby have her? <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> you mean to say that you were in this house all the time? Right here with Tessa. We used the outside stairway to get back in. I'm furious. I thought I was on my own. She all right? She's a Kilburn. Of course she's all right. <laughs> I understand you're responsible for this trickery. Do you realize I might have been killed? Mother, nobody asked you to telephone Maori and impersonate Sylvia. Well, I... Well, that, that's no excuse for this... this policeman to lie about a court order. Well, let's just say it was a, a cover story to compel a disagreeable old lady to help me smoke out a murderer. Well, Betty here was my accomplice. She told a crucial part of the story to you. Betty, is that true? Well, yes, ma'am. Well, <laughs> you're fired. Fired? Oh, no. Oh, anyone who could fool an old crow like me is dangerous. You'll have to learn all my secrets. From now on, you'll take charge of Tessa exclusively. Now let's get out of here and leave my son alone with my granddaughter. I, I thought I just fired you. Lieutenant Gordon will see me to my room, won't you, Lieutenant? Thank you.